This is the CNC router I used to machine all the effector parts. I built this in early 2011 and have been using it solidly since then. It's had multiple upgrades in its time with the linear rails being replaced. I've replaced the round ones with square ones. The Z-axis has been completely rebuilt um, a couple of times. It's almost got the last This part I am drilling the holes for the original Predator arms to be mounted. I've made a jig, it's clamped securely, I've used a laser to centre the position of where the 2.5mm hole is going to be milled into this and let's go. Up on the wall there, I have a depth. I'm going to take this hole down 10 millimeters. Down 10. And there we go with that. Machine off. Unclamp. This just, that clamp just makes sure this is held tightly into there. Um, Everything's lined up and, and the X-Y axis are locked in position so that I literally can take that out, rotate that around into that position, push that down hard against those surfaces and place this back. It's gonna end up in exactly the same position that it was because it's butted up against this. Hold that in, tighten up the vise Place this clamp on again. It's not absolutely necessary, but I like to have it there for stability. And we do the next hole. We're done. Bring that out. And there we have it. All the holes are drilled and ready to tap M3. What I like to do after the part has just come off the CNC router is to uh, just deburr the edges. They can be a little sharp and so I don't cut myself handling this more while I'm tapping the holes and whatever. I use uh, a little buffing wheel here. It's uh, a soft spongy, sort of like an emery wheel. Um, and uh, I'll just run that over the edges very quickly like this and it just cleans them up. And that's it. Later on in the process, after I've tapped all the holes and done the rest of the work, I'll use the same wheel to do all the faces of this to uh, make them nice and clean. In this process, I'm using a jig that I've made up to mark the holes that I'm going to drill and then tap in the fan mounting brackets and also the hot end mounting bracket. I've got the jig, it's marked uh, for the two types and all I do is place that over and all I'm doing is just putting a mark, a little blip where 
I'm going to then drill the holes using my drill press. So that's all I need for that. And this is the last one. And I use a different jig for that. Now I'm on the drill press, I'm going to drill the holes down eight millimeters. So first of all, I set up zero, and this some of this you can't see, but I've got a dial gauge up here, that's zero. I'm now going to move that out of position, bring the head down eight millimeters or thereabouts, lock the stop off so everyone's gonna be the same. Get that out of the way and get that set, start and I just do each one of these. Till I hit the stop, move on to the next one. Those are those two. Now, the um, one for the hot end uh, is a little shorter than these, so I have to reset my end stop up. And what I'm going to do is place a little bit of aluminium in there. So this now sits a little higher, like that. Clamp it up. Now, what I've got to do is I have to go down here, set zero again, and then move that out of the way, move down eight, and then, then down we go. Once this is done, I then go through the process of tapping all the holes M3. Every hole in the effector design is made to be tapped M3 so that there is just a consistency in the screw thread size. The only difference that varies is the length of the screws. So we'll next go clean this up and then go through the tapping process. Okay, now to tap all the holes, and there are a lot of them. I won't make the video of tapping every hole because that would take about an hour to do. But um, just to give you an idea, I mount the part in a vise. I've been tapping holes for many years now, so um, I've uh, developed a fairly precise way of doing it. I use, this is just a very cheap um, cordless screwdriver with a chuck mounted in it and an M3 tap. And uh, it's really good, this one has a switch either side here, so it's really quick for me to forward and reverse it. I use an M3 spiral tap. The benefit of using a spiral tap is the fact that you can just drive the, the uh, tap straight through without having to just keep forward and reversing and backing off all the time. So to give you an idea, I line that up. I've got a fairly good eye for making sure this is all square and I just drive it through, back off to do the next one. Or oh, by the way, I also use a little bit of lubricant. I use WD-40. Uh, I find it's a very light lubricant for tapping holes and uh, it gives a much cleaner thread, especially in uh, aluminium. So 
I do a few holes, go through it, brush off, and uh, dip again, and move on to the next hole. And I just then progress through all the holes in the effector itself, in all the brackets, um, and for this particular one, the magball adapters, every hole is tapped M3. I haven't counted them all, but there's probably about 30 holes in total. So um, it's, uh, it's a bit of a laborious process, but uh, it's got to be done. To tap the side holes in the effector, I just find it easier to hold it in my hand to do that. It's a little bit more convenient and um, works well. I did do a count just a little while ago of the total number of holes and it works out to about 43 uh, holes in total that need to be tapped. That should be it. Oh no, it's not. Just when you think you've Got the last one, there's another one. I will do a final check when this is all cleaned up that I have got all the holes because I hope not to send one of these out with a hole untapped, but that seems to be about right. So the final thing I've got to do is these and I'll put those in the vise to do those. But that's basically the whole tapping process. It's done. A little messy and we'll clean all this up and then we'll go to the next so having tapped all the holes there's a little bit of burr on the uh, back side that needs to be taken off i do it very simply with a countersinking bit in my hand drill and i literally just go along and take those off by hand and just work my way around every hole this makes the whole job a lot neater so i won't go through all of that i'll just do all of them all and then we'll uh, take the next stage as it comes the last actual machining job i have to do with the effector is to countersink four holes those are the ones that are on the underside of where the cooling fan brackets mount. They've got to be countersunk to be able to put in screws that won't interfere with the uh, part cooling ducts when that's uh, mounted. What I've got here is just a, uh, a reject effector that I've already countersunk the holes for at the right depth and I'm just literally setting up my drill press so that I don't go too deep. Put that aside, fire it up. When counter sinking, you probably can't see, but the drill press is running really slow. What I've done is I've marked the holes that I need to counter sink, just so I don't mistakenly counter sink another hole that doesn't need to be done. Just reminds me. And uh, I then just go through the process of doing each one of those. So that's all for 
screw holes countersunk and uh, that in fact completes the final actual machining part. The rest of the job now is to just clean this all up ready for anodizing. What I'm going to do now is to buff up the surface of all the machine parts. You can see, look at that's the original surface. It's got a sort of a grey, musty sort of a look to it. It's, it's like it's got a coating on it of some sort. So we're going to use our wheel here to just give that a nice uh, clean up and uh, also deburr all the uh, edges of of the uh, part at the same time. So we'll quickly fire the machine up and it's a very simple process. Just going down and there we go. So you can see there's uh, quite a difference now in, in the look of that. We will uh, just give it one final go over with one of these little emery blocks to, uh, to really finish it off just before going into the anodizing process, which I will do later on. The final little buffing up using an emery, this is an emery sponge. It's, you can see it's spongy looking. It's a very fine emery. Actually, it's quite a lot finer than the actual wheel that I use to do the first part of this process. All I do is just go through and just quickly do the surfaces because with anodizing the result you end up with at the end is only as good as the surface that you have prepared and any little things that you don't like it won't cover up imperfections so that's the way that's that's done it's it's quite quite quick and uh, you can see that's quite uh, quite shiny. It's got a nice little uh, sort of a slightly rough sanded type finish, which uh, enhances the uh, look of it when it's actually anodized. If I wanted to, I could actually polish this to be a nice, bright, shiny polish, but uh, it's just not necessary. I like the look of that one. So that's about it. I hope all of this shows you just the process of making these and and uh, how time consuming they can be but the results are very satisfying and uh, i end up with an effector that is uh, solid aluminium rigid as it can possibly be and really really satisfying to use so i hope you find the whole thing interesting and uh, informative thank you for watching